I, mean, I think right now for the banking environment, they're benefiting from the fact that there's a surfeit of liquidity globally. And so, yes, they were sandbagged before and they're kind of released from that. But as well as that, market conditions have really gone in their favour from a liquidity perspective. As well as that, if we look at the period ahead, global growth momentum's improving. That should start to buoy earnings even further than what we've seen. Where are you on this? I guarantee about 70% of companies will beat estimates, and that happens every single quarter. So that's really more of the normal. So that should be the benchmark that people should go off. Mm. Uh, certainly, we've lowered expectations dramatically. Uh, we're going to get most companies that beat, but that should what, that's what we should be looking at. If it's more than 70%, I would consider it a good quarter relative to expectations, and anything below 70, uh, I think, would be a bit disappointing. Is that because companies lie to analysts, or is it just because analysts are in on the game? I, I just think it's the information they always, up the last few no, they weeks. Always I'm with Joe. They well, always companies. We heard from David Rubenstein the that, the, that the entire outlook for his companies improved in the last four. But have weeks. you ever? But yeah, but. Every well, quarter, it, off it the depths of, yeah, I mean, look, look at where we were middle of February. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty uh, dire uh, outlook. So it's certainly gotten better, and it, it's raised confidence in terms of uh, a CEO's expectations for earnings. Do, do the companies sandbag, or do the analysts just play along so that the companies do better than, what do you think? Both. I think the analysts don't think enough for themselves, so they rely on the companies which Every do Every quarter, they just are like sheep. They never realize, gosh, I'm being played. They never figure that. You're probably right. They probably never. What, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think it is? Well, I, th I think the analysts, honestly, most of the time, the analysts just listen to what the companies are telling them. Um, right. There's not a huge so amount of analysis. the companies sandbag. Yeah, the companies sandbagging it. Then they can beat. And the analysts just put in the numbers that the company guided towards. Uh, and, and, you know, the companies are, are sandbagging, especially so in this environment where there's a lot of uncertainty. It gives them the opportunity to sandbag. And right? then we report. Yes, they beat expectations. Yes, it was, but they, yeah, then we're. Right, so we're all complicit. So yeah. what do we do? I don't know, nothing. Keep doing it. No, I think that, no, I, I, I think you're on, you're on to something. I think we need to change Channel the way we approach it. Well, just say 70% beat, that's a normal earnings season. Given, given, given this backdrop, what do, you, yeah. what do you do? What do you do with your money right now? Uh, look, so right now, we're bullish on markets. Markets move on second derivatives. And global growth momentum, so the rate of growth in growth, is improving quite dramatically. All of the leading indicators globally are consistent with that. PMI new orders numbers are going across in most regions. Uh, they're not, a lot of them are now in expansionary territory, above 50. As well as that, global liquidity conditions are very right. favourable. The combination of strong global growth momentum and strong global liquidity typically results in higher markets. So the next couple of quarters looks very strong. This is what you, I mean. Joe, Joe has made the argument that things are very quiet, though. Also, we're talking. So that was my. It, 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 and and we've had a lot of people coming in saying it's a tired market, no reason for it to go higher. And you know, we. Well, they say it's going to hang. Right, and we got it right? back. We made back yeah. the January losses, but yeah. really, there's nothing, no impetus to go higher. And usually, when it's like that, all of a sudden, for no reason, maybe it goes higher, and and you end up, you know, you're not prepared for that. You're not in. You haven't bought anything. That, that's usually just the way it works. Well, I think. Look, the market is. You know, people are quite short still at the moment. So that, from that's a, good too. So from a positioning perspective, people are short, which is supportive of markets. If you start to do start to see positive news, you know, in our latest quarterly report, we're talking about the idea that look, the world is actually getting better because of the delays that we had in January and February, and people were so looking at the dire conditions we had then, they've ignored the fact that actually data's improved right. quite a lot, not only in the US, where it's clearly improving, but also around the world. Where's, where's market end this year? Look for our things, we're headed straight back. Uh, you know, I, 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 can't I, I have no idea where it's going to be. To me, the, the, mo the, most, the most compelling opportunity, in my opinion, is the commodity space. I think they're putting in a major bottom. And with that, emerging markets that depend on commodities to me are compelling. And, and I would, so instead of answering where's the market going to be at the end of the year, I think over the next couple of years, emerging markets outperform the S&P 500.